Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the next. We've got Anis Marchand, the Senior Vice President Analytics and Insight Course 5i with us. Anis leads the analytics and insight business and brings over 21 years of experience to Course 5 Intelligence. He, he has worked with numerous global Fortune 500 clients across various industries, including retail, travel and hospitality, telecommunication and technology, media, e-commerce. In his tenure, he has set up a global digital analytics delivery hub for clients. He has worked with clients to drive impact to their business by enabling them with innovative solutions and practices. Uh, I was given a very interesting topic, uh, probably didn't get covered much today, which is how do you bring ethics in the entire AI and uh, the entire AI deployment? Uh, and when I was thinking about ethics, uh, there were two things which really came to my mind, is who defines ethics and what is the level of ethics, the person or the individual who defines, what does it mean to them? And to each one of us, ethics can mean many things. And the levels of ethics in our businesses can mean to many things. So before I really go ahead and get into the, the dimensions of how ethics can be actually applied in day-to-day -day business applications when you think about AI deployment, I really wanted to take a step back and really think about, okay, who defines this? So the question was, and it is us, right? It is not any governing body. It is not anybody else. It's actually humans, right? Uh, who are actually involved in defining ethics. And more importantly, if I look at the definition of humans, these are, this is how a human is defined. And there are three things which really stands out as you think about a definition of a human, which is weakness, kindness, and sensitivity, right? Apart from the wonderful uh, things which was told about me, myself, I'm a father to two sons who are pretty young, and I'm sure most of you are parents out here. When we think about our children, we need to think about, okay, how do we instill ethics in them? so that they can thrive in the society and they can learn in the society. And there's a key catch here is how do we learn? How do we as, as individuals learn? And as I go further into it, there are three dimensions of we, we, the way we learn. There is the construct, there is the cognitive part, and then there is more importantly the community. And the first piece, which is the construct, is when we learn, we try to build or we try to build dimensions in our in our heads or in our minds, or we try to go ahead and really build these constructs in real life to really think whether our, what we've learned is really made applicable. Like when I give my son a box of Legos, he really wants to go ahead and build something so that he can learn out of it, what he can build. The second is the cognition, which is more about thinking when you're learning, you're also thinking, okay, how does it really apply? How does it really make sense for myself? And last but not the uh, most important thing is the community is when you're thinking about learning, you're also looking at satisfaction from the group of people or the community which you uh, live in. Like what you've learned, does it resonate or does it apply or am I somebody out there? Frankly speaking, me, everything which is all about me, I'm a black sheep in this group. I'm not a PhD, I'm not a data scientist, I'm a behaviorist, I love to observe people. I love to observe what's happening within the organization. I love to observe what really, how people are really looking for to solve a particular problem. I'm not looking at data first. I'm not looking at technology or the application of AI. I'm really thinking about, okay, what do those environments or what do that community would think when they are looking at absorbing AI? So building on this further, how many of us learned something as a child or as children and really doing what we are doing today? I'm not. Right? I learned completely different. I, was, I started my career, my first job was completely different than what am I doing today. It's, it's evolved, right? And if you ask each one of them over here, did they start? But the last person, did he learn to be what he is or she is? Right? And to each one of them, the ethics is very different. Right? Now, if you take all these learnings and if you just think about, just keep these thoughts in mind, our expectations are never the same, right? Our expectations with our own self and with the world we live in is very different. We always want to go ahead and achieve something. 
And there was a good talk which was happening just before Doug's presentation, which is the crawl, walk, run. And today, our expectations with AI or the applicability of AI is also mismanaged. And I came through this wonderful video, which still makes me laugh, right? And it is true for all of us, like what can we expect out of AI? But there is some mismanaged uh, expectations from the industry. Uh, there was a good concept of crawl, walk, run. I would really want, want to give an example of run, of how people think about uh, when they think about AI or about real life scenario. So let's look at this. Can we get the audio, please? I don't know if you all have seen this video. That's what we're being sold, right, today in terms of AI. That this is what we can get, right? The baby out of the womb or what's being done in the lab, this is what the expectations are, right? And now if you start defining ethics for this child, think about it, right? So when we think about AI, I think about AI as a child as well, right? And it's going through an evolution. Uh, and there are different forms of the evolution Yes, there's a lot of conversations about automations. Today, automations is also being spoken about as an AI application. And I actually wanted to go ahead and see, okay, how long has it taken, and what are the actual applications of these different forms of AI? I don't know if you all have read about this, but the first calculator which was built, or the calculator today, is being considered as a weak, narrow AI, right? About the calculations which it can go ahead and achieve. It's a good example of a weak, narrow AI. A great example of strong, narrow AI is all these smart assistants which we today use and leverage on our day-to-day -day life. The Google DeepMind is a good example of weak general AI. And each of these generations, like ours, learn from the previous generation to go ahead and evolve. And today, if you have to ask me, it's taken 500, almost 5,000 years to evolve from there from the first automation. Can anybody guess what was the first automation? The wheel, right? It was somewhere around 3,500 BC actually when the first wheel was developed by our yester generations, right? it has almost taken 5,000 years to evolve from that automation to a weak narrow AI, when in 1600, when the first calculator came up. It's taken almost 376 years or 70 years. There is uh, discussions that in 1970 or 1950s, when the Turing test was done, that was the first application of AI. But if you have to ask me, it's been 376 years when the first calculator came out. Right? So it's taking time, and we are in this phase where you know, people are talking. But we are all thinking about the strong artificial or the super intelligence which is being spoken about. And everybody is thinking, oh, the Terminators or the iRobots will come and go ahead and rule us. And we have to start thinking about ethics. We need to start thinking, and we are all right. Right, I'll give you examples of the flaws of each one of them. We all know the flaws which we all have with calculators. We all used it in our mathematics test, right, in our 12th grades. And I'm sure how many of us scored well because of that calculator being there with us. Right? It's not just the technology. There was a lot of something to do with us as well. But if I align this to human evolution, it's taking millions of years for humans to evolve. So if I think about AI as a kid, you can gauge of how this evolution is going to take time. Yes, there are studies of 150 years, which was a number which I heard today, or 25 years, which is the other number I keep hearing. But today, nobody can guess how long will it take there. But when you're going through that evolution, you also need to think about, OK, how you go ahead and bring in ethics at each stage. And there is a process. There is a step-by-step -step method to go ahead and evolve when you think about each of these steps. But there has been disappointments as humans as we evolve, uh, 
and more importantly, these disappointments have made us question the ethics. These disappointments have made us question, okay, how do we take and go ahead and scale this process? And these disappointments have come in from the past. And when I say past in the last 20 years, when these large technology deployments, which as an organization, which we've undertaken to go ahead, and these big promises which were given, oh, this will go ahead and solve your world hunger problems, which has not solved, right? We still have world hunger issues in many, uh, prob uh, many areas. So when you think about AI and when you think about deployments and when you think about these deployments, there are these large four forms which really come to mind, in my mind, right? There is machine to machine, there's machine to a single human cluster or segment, there's machine to many clusters, which you see today examples of Alexa's or uh, many of these. And then there is the interoperability. There are very few cases, in fact, there are none which really gets into the example. The self-driving cars probably are examples of interoperability. But more importantly, these are the four form factors. And when it comes to business, these are the actual four dimensions where you would see most of them will fall into, right? These, these are the large four where you can think about a physical world or a virtual world, or you can think about an obvious or inconspicuous world, and really go ahead and start mapping your AI initiatives. Now, keeping the both in mind when you think about these as well as this, okay, how do you bring ethics? How do you really go ahead and think about where do you plug ethics and what is the real process? In my mind, when you think about the learning and when you think about each of these factors, one is the environment. It's very important to really understand what is that environment, whether it's within the organization or whether it's external to your client. What is that environment of the application or the deployment of the particular AI? The second is the scenarios. We often test in our labs or in our R&D or in our innovation, we only test one or two scenarios. We can really not test all the scenarios where this particular application or this AI methodology will be used. The third is what inputs. There was good conversation about how much of data we are using, but it's not just the inputs on data, but it's about the business rules, which you go ahead and define. And the third is, or the fourth is the rules. What business rules you go ahead and define? How much will it act on it? How much you, you will have to provide an input? And what are the boundaries you go ahead and set up where it will stop and it will provide a feedback to the user that this is the limit you've crossed or this is the limit you cannot go ahead and achieve more than what you want to do. And the alerts, which is alerts back to the system saying that you cannot go ahead or it needs to learn on its own that you know it, there are being scenarios or there are being environments which are being tested. But there is one more thing when we think about ethics, it's about who is building it which goes back to my point about humans, right? Have they thought about all these scenarios? Because as I said, we all have some weakness. We all think irrationally. We don't think logically. So when we think about ethics, we also have to think about with all these factors, who's building it? Is it just a scientist or is there a behaviorist? Is there somebody who understands business? What is that collective team who's coming together to build or go ahead and drive and you def want to define ethics? Is there your legal team or your, uh, your, uh, your ethics team who's involved to go ahead and think about deploying of AI within an organization or for your end client. But with all these, we're still bound to make mistakes because as humans, we will make mistakes, right? And we've seen examples, great examples of failures. And one of the examples, can we get the audio on this, please? Yeah. I don't know if you all have... You want to hear a station for porn detected? Porno ringtone, okay. hot chick, amateur girl, quality, no, sexy. No, 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 no. Pussy oh. anal dildo ringtone. Alexa, girl. stop! <laughs> no. Now, think about those six areas which I spoke about earlier. Were there boundaries set? Were there environments set? Were there scenarios? This is dangerous if I think for my kid as well. In fact, I have one at home. Right? Have you tested the scenarios? Have you tested the user group? Have you really tested who's going to use it? Right? So ethics, when you think about ethics, it's not just ethics, oh, their machine is going to overtake us. It's ethics about usability as well. Right? And that's why these seven or six areas are really, really important when you think about ethics. As you 
focus on death. But all this is fun, right? I had an amazing day today. I, it was all great. But we need to really think about AI and AI application, and this is something which is near and dear to me, and this is my parting thoughts to you. So as human beings, are we building new species, or are we evolving ourselves? So there is that two thoughts, right? And that's why that ethic question really comes into mind. So when I was doing this research, so okay, whom are we comparable? Like if you really looked at my first slide, it said we are uh, different than mammals, right? So one thing which came into my mind, why is this question about ethics coming in? Because we are thinking we are in, in danger, right? So I looked up and I said, what's our conservation status, right? So if you look at different mammals or different animals or species, there are different conservation status. And our conservation status is we are least concerned. This is uh, published. This is not me, frankly speaking. This is published. Humans are least concerned areas, right, as of now. So when we think about building AI or deploying AI, we really need to think about, OK, are we building a new species? Or we are using technology to really go ahead and become a combined species rather than having a very differentiated story. Does anybody know who that gentleman is? No? OK. I follow him. I don't follow any of the AI experts. Uh, his name is Neil Harbidson. He talks about artificial senses, not artificial intelligence. And the difference of the two which he mentions is artificial senses is when the machine provides input and the human takes a decision. In an artificial intelligence, the machine takes the decision. Right? You should look up. There's a cyborg foundation. He's fought long wars because that tentacle which is there out of his head is actually defined as a, is an extension of his body. It's a human part which he has defined. So when he was going to get a picture for his passport in UK embassy, they denied him. Because typically when you go for your passport size photographs, they don't want your spectacles. They just want a face. And this was protruding of his head. So now, if you really look at the uh, UK embassy uh, policy of your picture, it says this is allowed, right? You should look up what the Cyborg Foundation is doing. Now, if you think about ethics, of how ethics can be evolved as you think about combined species, rather than just a new species, it's phenomenal of what's happening. And these, this work, this technology is actually being deployed. There are many people who are deploying chips, deploying. Uh, we already are wearing smartwatches, so we already are connected today. We are, wearing, we are roaming around with smart devices, which is tracking everything about us. So we are almost a combined species. We are not defining a new species. We are becoming a new species of our own. And when you do that, and if you go the evolution phase of any species, we are endangering our previous species. So how do you define ethics in that particular process of defining boundaries, defining alerts, and defining a cognitive system which gives us a feedback that something is not happening right? Thank you. That was really nice of you, Mr. Alice. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's give it a bigger, bigger round of applause for the information. Thank you.